have to be on the ready. But we gotta hold each other accountable too. Today, we took a step back, right? To get, you either get better or you get worse, okay? There is no in-between. There is no in-between, okay? And so, this is one of those days where I let it go. And so I wanna see who's gonna step up and take a hold of this thing. We set our standards. We have the expectation. We know what it looks like. And it doesn't matter who steps up in there. That's the expectation. And if it's not going right, and if it's not going right with us, handle us first. If it's not going right overall, bring everybody to, together and get it right. It's a Northwestern team, Kirk, that, well, they've won the West Division title two of the last three years, and it's really become a culture of consistency under the direction of their alum, Pat Fitzgerald. Right? Like Coach said, trust yourself. Trust yourself, trust the process, trust the work that you put in to getting to this point right here. All right? Getting this point right here. Let's get this thing going, man. It's been a great feeling to get through, make each other better and get ready for the season. It's exciting to finally be here a day away, 24 hours away, and that first game, a Big Ten game, it's just a great feeling. As a freshman, this being my first college game, uh, and getting here, getting to this point in my life is just a huge honor, and I'm ready. Uh, the upperclassmen, uh, great, great guys, got all the freshmen ready, and uh, we all, like iron sharpens iron. From a first year's first ever collegiate game to a senior making his first start at linebacker, there's a lot to be excited about on the shores of Lake Michigan. I mean, I've, I've always been ready to go to play at linebacker, be behind uh, Patty and Blake. Um, I've always prepared to, to play every snap of the game, even though I was, I only ended up playing just special teams. Oh, it's just, it's a lot more exciting. Oh, just ready to, ready to go out there with my boys, my. My defense is defense. We do camp, we, we train every day, we go to meetings. Uh, we're always grinding, preparing for the next practice, the next walkthrough. Um, but preparing for a game, uh, it's, it's completely different. Like, it's going to be 80, 100 plays of just of war, of all our guys going against their guys, who's going to last longer, who's going to make more plays, and who's going to win the game at the end of it. The Northwestern Wildcats are on the air tonight from Ryan Field in Evanston. Big Ten football. Stand it up, man. Let's get ready to roll. Get ready to have some fun. Yeah. Uh, not a whole lot more to say. Tonight's about you guys. All right? Have fun. Enjoy the moment. Back at Ryan Field for the first time. Having mixed emotions, not able to play, but um, definitely excited to be out here at tailgating. Season opener and a conference showdown right out of the gate for the defending Big Ten West champs, Northwestern. They were undefeated at home last year. Their only loss during the regular season on the road at Michigan State. And they will get back together to kick off a brand new season. There is no mistaking, this is Hunter's team. He has a rapport with his teammates. I felt his command and he told us he's grateful that he was given the opportunity to earn a second chance tonight.
Johnson rushes on. Johnson looking, heaves it deep down the numbers for Kurtz, and he came down with it. What a catch by Bryce Kurtz inside the 30. Johnson to throw, winds up, throws right side. Robinson's got it, 40, 45, and out of bounds. They're up 14-0. They're threatening for more. And Thorne sets up a screen, caught by Simmons at the 20, 15, 10. Cuts right to the five into the end zone. Touchdown. The Wildcats were staring down a three-score deficit. But with plenty of game left to be played, the offense started to get into rhythm. Quarterback Hunter Johnson was a perfect 10 for 10 on the team's fifth possession, pushing the Cats to the Michigan State doorstep. But he'd need one more to keep the game within reach. On fourth and goal at the one. Here's Johnson, rolls right now, throws to the end zone, wide open, touchdown! Trey Pugh, the veteran tight end. Set a hard edge, Bryce will run the alley and make the tackle. You with me? Drop a line. Right there, side of him. Get him one on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Get back to the basics. It's about freaking how we play the game. Head level, effort, strain, body on a body, all that stuff, okay? Uh, other than that, hey, we scored right there. We've shown that we can move the ball at will. We get the ball at the beginning of the half. Let's go down and do it again, make this a one-score game, and keep moving. Here we go. Yes, The evening rain also watered down most of the scoring throughout the third quarter. With the Cats still chasing down the Spartans' lead, the offense found success through the air, but time was running out. Tap to Hunter Johnson. Johnson looking, middle of the end zone, touchdown! Great in the middle by Trey Pugh, his second touchdown tonight. The Spartans are going to the ground game now, try to eat up the clock. It was not the night the Cats had hoped for. The crowd here at Ryan Field, which turned out to be the first time fans were allowed here in two years, and they saw the Cats come up short. A ton of confidence in those guys. They're they're very very talented, um, and I, I thought you guys, you know, I thought they showed that tonight. Um, but um, just just didn't get the win. You know, a couple things. Number one, we got to get our guys confident to go make the play. We got to probably tackle more in practice. I thought we tackled enough fundamentally. Obviously, we didn't bring it with us to the Walter Athletic Center over here at Ryan Field, which is my fault, 100% my fault. The old saying is you can make the biggest improvements between game one and game two. You look forward to that? You think? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get to work on it right now, buddy. Uh, you know, just it was great to be back in Ryan Field with our fans. I can't thank them enough. And uh, just really excited about getting back here next week and, and getting a win for them. All right, Coach, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Go Cats. All right, looks like we're going to have a couple players here. <laughs> Thursdays in Evanston mean it's time for position groups to gather beyond the Walter Athletic Center for dinner. A tradition done privately for the past year has finally returned back to the local community and with it, a hungry group of offensive linemen. For as long as I've been here, we have been going film Thursday before position dinners and it's always been quarterbacks and linemen together. We have to be the closest group on the team because if we're not on the same page as the quarterbacks, things go pretty poorly and they have to trust us to have their back. We have to trust them to have ours. Yeah, offensive line in general, um, you better have a workman's like attitude and you better be industrious. Um, there is a certain monotony that, that comes with playing this position and you better fall in love with doing the same thing over and over again and striving for perfection. Uh, I'm a realist, it's not, it's, you're never gonna be perfect, but we're gonna damn sure try to get to that point. Sophomore Peter Skaronski started every game as a true first year, 
The highest-rated Wildcat signee in nearly a decade did not disappoint, collecting all conference honors in 2020, which came as a surprise to very few. The moment I met him, I knew he was going to be a successful athlete because he was prepared to play in the Big Ten the moment he stepped on campus. Um, he's taking it like a job from the moment he stepped on campus, just like Rashawn. Rooming with Rashawn for three years, it's incredible to see his dedication outside of it, and Pete has the same drive. You know, I didn't even really realize it, I feel like, at the time that I, I was playing Big Ten football, but I was just out there and I just did it. I think this time around I have a lot more appreciation as to what goes into a season and the magnitude of it, whereas last year it was just like, okay, you're out there, do it. All throughout recruiting, Peter, you knew what type of background he had, you knew what type of program he was coming from, you knew that what his singular focus was, um, but we're just scratching the surface. Skaronski is among a talented group led by Kurt Anderson now in his third season as the coach of the offensive line and keeping the Cats in the trenches as close as possible. We're really tightly knit. I think that's a, the biggest thing. I, mean, I feel like we're one of the closest position groups on the team, um, which, which helps a lot, especially the offensive line, because you're always working together. You're never rarely by yourself um, in a play. And so I think that really is, is huge for our camaraderie. And then just the standard Coach Anderson sets, who wants us to be the most physical, toughest unit out there. Just the way he thinks, the way he acts, it's carried on to us. Relentlessness! Be relentless! We are right here and it's bam, ball snap, wedge it, bam! Wedge it in the ground as fast as you can. That's it, strike, squeeze, left, left! We've had pinpoint, laser, focus. Yeah. Keep that. Bracket the breastplate, choke him out! Talk about keep the same mentality. The same mentality. Unlock the hips. Violence. Eyeballs through thumbnails. One play at a time. One snap. Okay, and execute. Get to the line. Do it again. Lift with your hands. How fast you get those first two steps to the ground? This is why we're Northwestern. This is why we are who we are. I don't like silent movies. I might be old, but I'm not that old. I don't enjoy Charlie fucking Chaplin. I want. $200 million explosions in my face for two half hours. That's what I want. Unlock it, Angela, let's go. That's good talk. That's good talk. That's good talk. Please, finish with some nastiness. Good, here we go. Then continue to chase knowledge to get yourself to climb that mountain and get better. Tomorrow's a day for us to get better. Switch hands on three. One, two, three. Two, three. People are depending on you and uh, so it could be job-like and workman-like at that point because uh, if you don't do your job, uh, nobody else can get their job done and that, that's kind of how an offensive line works. You can't throw those balls down the field and catch, catch big balls. You can't break big long runs uh, without the offensive line. No one's ever filled a stadium to go watch seven on seven, right? So it's about the, it's about the guys up front. It's about the trench warfare. Keep hammering, all right? This is our game. This is our game. We're going to go back to fundamentals and details and pad levels and finishing. You should be proud of yourselves. Once he grabs his, his, gets his hands on the defender, you're playing 10 on 10 because your defender is out. He's out of the way. To be honed in on the skill set and to have that many more tools in his toolbox to go play with, um, you know, he's got the makings of a, of a special player and, and so, um, will continue to raise the standard of the expectation of what a left tackle is here at Northwestern. Not just one of the many reminders of September 11th, 2001, a day which will forever resonate in this nation's psyche. When compared to the events of football is so incredibly insignificant, and we all recognize that, it is after all just a game, but it's America's game. You know, um, it's Heroes Week, and you know it's it's um, it's it's sad that our Heroes that game actually falls on 9/11 this year. It's the 20th anniversary of that tragic attack. So we have a lot to be thankful for. We're obviously very blessed to have the opportunity to play football here today, aren't we? You know, when you start putting some things into perspective. There's a lot that goes on in our world. Think about those that were impacted after. I mean, think about those that when that thing was going down, ran to help people. They didn't run from it. They ran to help people. 
Think about what kind of teammate that is. Think about what kind of teammate you are right now. Think about how you're helping us win. Different game. We know that. But still, nonetheless, some lessons that we can learn. Okay? And because of those that have sacrificed greatly, we get the freedom to do what we get to do. So the least we could do is enjoy every minute of it. Every second of it. Have fun. Get after it. And enjoy every moment that we have together. symbolic day today, man, right? Think about what this day represents. Let's go play with that type of pride, okay? Let's go take that pride back that we have owned. Let's take it back today, all right? A very special day across the country this being the 20 year anniversary of September 11th. Hard to believe it has been 20 years in Northwestern honoring those lives lost and all of the first responders to those 9-11 attacks with the commemorative logo on their helmets. This is a game where they can come back out and be physical. That's what they need to ultimately do in this game. And I think it starts up front with the offense and the defensive lines. The week one loss didn't have much time to linger as the Northwestern line set the tone from the game's first play. Evan Hall, I think, is getting a, getting a great opportunity. And Peter Skaronski, to me, in my opinion, this is someone you should watch. This is the kind of game where you're going to have to watch this a couple of times because Skaronski is such a difference maker as a young offensive lineman. A balanced running attack led by sophomore Evan Hall would put the Cats on top first, and there was no looking back. Johnson will hand to Hall, and Hall reaching for the end zone. Touchdown! A very impressive opening drive. This is a very, very good offensive line beyond just the left tackle, Skaronski, and they block for Hall again. Another chunk play on the ground for Northwestern, brought down at the 50-yard line by Michael Thomas. Reestablishing the line of scrimmage is what you saw there. Don't let your intensity lie. Keep this intensity for four quarters. Doesn't matter who's out there. It's about us right now. Get right. First and ten. This is Anthony Tyus, and he's got some breathing room to midfield. Really good picks. Play selection. Personnel. Tyus, the first year running back, who's getting his legs underneath him on the second drive of the game for Northwestern. He's out of bounds at the 25. And Malik Washington is in the slot right side. Johnson on the move, right over Michael Thomas and into the arms of Washington for the Northwestern touchdown. Bobcats think that Atatamiwa Atabara could have a breakout season this year. Ball is loose. Thompson is able to claw it back to his body. Great pressure by Atatamiwa Atabara. It's a loss of seven yards on the sack. He's prepared and ready to go. I had a chance to watch him a lot on film. And he has all the tools that are needed to be able to get after the quarterback. And we've seen him already make a huge play today. The trademark defense was back to dominant form, with Adetamawa Adabare providing pressure. Here's the snap, and Thompson under pressure. Thompson grabbed and sacked. Seems like Adabara has gotten tougher to block as this game has gone on. Well, as we've been talking all game, this is an opportunity for them to be physical. Really, really be physical at the point of attack. 
Northwestern's first-year defensive coordinator, Jim O'Neill's unit, pitching a shutout here as we start the fourth quarter, and we go down to Michelle. Yeah, guys, he's been animated on the sideline the entire game and really praising his defense mostly, but the biggest emphasis for him in that break, one, communicate, two, do not be late on the pressure. He tells us he likes pressure. We know this. But it was the special teams unit that put on a remarkable show. That was number 99 again, Atatamua Atabara, giving Indiana State some problems along the front line. Here's Brandon Joseph on the punt return. He clears the first wave and has got some room to run. Blockers in front, well into Indiana State territory, and knocked out of bounds by the punter, Travis Reiner. Yard. This one drives him back to his own 15. He will return. He's back to the 20 along the numbers near side 30. 35 40. Got a chance to the 40. 35 30. Still on his feet. Hurdles the man and run down inside the 20 yard line of Indiana State. Brandon Joseph with his second long punt return. Brandon Joseph has racked up all 111 total yards on his last two punt returns. A short kick, line drive taken, dropped by Nairo, picks it back up, running with it. Nairo cuts back to his left, and he's got blockers to the 50, 45, 40. He's to the 35, the 30, and slammed down inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. Yeah. The third long punt return for the Wildcats today. It's been the bright spot for Northwestern. Line drive kick from Reiner is fielded by Nairo, who makes a couple of men miss. And it's still going. How about this? The last four punt returns has total 175 yards. <laughs> Hunter Johnson pulls back, hands to Hall. He's to the 10. Hall inside the five, reaching for the end zone. Touchdown! Good job by that offensive line and Evan Hall. Evan Hall now 22 carries, 113 yards. But this ball game is over. The Wildcats have recorded victory number one in 2021. It's all over here in Evanston, and the Wildcats win. Evan, when I see you walking around, the offensive linemen, uh, they just love you. They're patting you on the head. Talk about that relationship. You're obviously very grateful for what they do, but it just seems like a really close lineman running back bond. Absolutely. It's the big dogs. It's the big dogs. you got to love them up. As your running back, like, th those are the guys that get it done for you. You know what I mean? And, you know, they, they, they might they might give the, the yards to the running back, but at the end of the day, it's the old line that makes those opportunities. And so uh, you got to love them up, and you got to have a great relationship there because we're going to keep this thing rolling. Evan, great game. Great, good luck next week. Thank you. Keep working. Experience has been gained. History made. Improvements needed. And with a day of reflection that extended well beyond the game, the Wildcats now look forward.